Good evening and welcome to tomorrow's tropics for the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season. Please note I am not a meteorologist and this forecast is uh, totally made up of my own opinions about this uh, conditions we are looking at right now and uh, for is totally not official at all. So it is April 1st right now and that means we're getting closer to hurricane season and it is a good time to take a very early look at the hurricane uh, season conditions that are starting to uh, make themselves known right now. Of course, it is very early, so this will be a low confidence forecast. So uh, don't take, don't think that this is exactly what's going to happen because things uh, can and will change before we actually get to the hurricane season. So let's first off look at Enso, and this one's definitely interesting. There's, uh, it doesn't look like we will get El Nino, but there's one thing that's kind of uh, keeping a little uncertainty in the mix during this uh, spring predictability barrier, where usually we're a lot more uncertain. And here we have this warm pool uh, at depth, and this is because of a downwelling Kelvin wave that formed recently, and that is uh, helping to weaken the La Nina. And you can tell this, uh, just qualitatively, this is kind of like a decaying Nina sort of thing uh, going on. So. This isn't really too much of a surprise. We're heading back into neutral for now. Uh, can we get an El Nino out of this uh, if it comes to the surface? Maybe if I can get some uh, support from the atmosphere and uh, if we can get some westerly wind bursts going on, but it doesn't seem that way right now, so I don't think it's really likely. We have a strong walker cell here. Uh, you, you can see the easterly wind bursts here further to the uh, what or to the east and further west you have a westerly wind burst over the uh, Indian Ocean and in the middle of that you have that convergence area which is typical of a La Nina or negative Enso uh, and looking at the sea surface temperatures this really really goes against El Nino this almost makes me want to discount it if I were looking at the uh, uh, subsurface temperatures and this is because of the negative Pacific uh, decadal oscillation, which is currently causing a, or helping cause a negative Pacific meridio, uh, meridional mode, which uh, when the, uh, the intertropical convergence zone is further south during the spring equinox uh, time of year, you tend to have more of that north, northern hemisphere wind pattern make itself known on the equator and so that enhanced northeasterly wind because of this uh, sea surface temperature pattern will tend to get itself to the equator and that uh, tends to enhance the easterly winds and take away from the westerly winds so this is a pattern that also um, at least uh, kind of discourages an El Nino but uh, possibly kind of props up an uh, La Nina and there's also a very enhanced walker cell type thing that um, looks to be going on. So this pattern is actually very good if you have westerly wind bursts for an El Nino because you can uh, get sort of more bang for your buck. Uh, this warm, this enhanced gradient if you have a westerly wind burst means that uh, for less westerly winds you can get more uh, infection of warm water to the east but if you don't have that then this actually favors the opposite this favors La Nina when you don't have westerly wind bursts and that's because if you have this warm water hanging around here you have a low pressure out, wet, um, out in this region uh, and then you have sinking air and higher pressure out in this region because of the cold water and uh, you can tell what's going to happen here the the air wants to go from high pressure to low pressure so that means that the equator where there's really a Coriolis force, you tend to have enhanced easterly winds and that's basically your enhanced walker cell. And that will uh, likely, if this pattern keep, uh, holds, keep us from really getting much of a, an El Nino going or even warm. And so uh, we'll have to see how this Eastern uh, Pacific area is too because sometimes that warms up before the west warms up that also can kind of hurt an uh perspective el nino because that uh then if you have westerly wind bursts they have less bang for their buck 
So we'll have to definitely see what happens, but it is interesting. And another thing actually to note is that uh, this is our first year of La Nina. And if you look back in kind of the history of Enso, uh, first year La Nina, La Nina's tend to be f uh, followed by maybe a period where it goes back up to neutral, like what we're probably going to see right now, and then a dip back to La Nina. So we're probably going to see it uh, stay in cool neutral, at least neutral, and possibly come back to La Nina, but it doesn't seem that we're going to continue warming up into El Nino. Uh, if we look at some uh, forecasts from uh, uh, CPC and IRI, you can see these model forecasts here. They're very uh, focused on neutral, maybe a little bit into La Nina. And you've got these, a few of these outliers that have uh, La Nina during the August, to, uh, August, September, October tri-monthly, which is peak uh, Atlantic hurricane season. So we got these uh, outliers here, but mostly it's just neutral, and that's probably what we're going to see. Looking here, we also see at that time frame uh, possibility for El Nino, which uh, definitely is warranted at this time of year. Um, but it does seem that the most likely thing will be either La Nina or neutral conditions. So it doesn't seem that Enso will be a big hindrance to the hurricane season. And so that is uh, the one thing that makes it kind of easy to lean uh, more to the uh, more active uh, kind of side of things. Now let's look at the sea surface temperatures for the Atlantic. And uh, for, at first glance, you don't have the most favorable kind of look. You have a kind of uh, pseudo-negative uh, Atlantic multi-decadal uh, oscillation here. You got those uh, cold tropics and uh, subpolar regions and warm subtropics. But it's harder to tell this early because if you notice further south, the water's a little warmer and then the canary current kind of varies warmer. That's actually more the area you want to look uh, at this time of year. So it's hard to tell if um, it is a more active kind of pattern showing up or if it's just uh, you have the more uh, stronger trade winds here. But it doesn't seem that it's uh, super, super unfavorable at uh, this point. And also looking in the future, in uh, very near future, we have a negative uh, North Atlantic oscillation here, and that is going to tend to have high pressure here and low pressure further south and a suppressed jet stream. And at the bottom of those lows, you have enhanced westerly winds uh, relative to average. So if we can, if that does get down to the tropics, that will slow down the trade winds, and that might uh, cause a bit of a spring warm up. If we don't get that, though, um, it's likely that it'll be faked out by uh, what we we could almost call by now old reliable, which is uh, Africa here. The West African monsoon for years now has been uh, basically causing uh, westerly wind anomalies as it kind of sucks in air from the sinking uh, air further west and uh, again kind of sucking it into Africa. And that means you have uh, winds coming out of the west uh, relative to average, and that trend tends to slow down the trade winds as the African monsoon starts revving up. And so it's likely we're probably going to see that happen yet again. And so the West African monsoon here uh, will warm up the sea surface temperatures and also cause the waves to be, uh, uh, tropical waves to be a bit beefier because of that. Uh, what, uh, more moist air coming from the Sahel and into the Eastern Atlantic. Uh, we'll see if this holds, but it, uh, if it does, as it has the last few years, it will mean that you have stronger, more uh, with stronger tropical waves with like better structure that come out of Africa, and. Uh, generally are more likely to become tropical cyclones. We'll have to see if it kind of overplays its hand because it actually has done that in the past few years, uh, especially 2020. 
uh, last year, we saw a lot of waves kind of getting stuck here as it really slowed down the trade wind flow. And that means you had a bunch of tra uh, tropical waves kind of piling up in the region. You had a big monsoonal kind of mess in peak season uh, that was kind of reminiscent actually of the West Pacific. Uh, but that monsoonal mess meant you couldn't really get tropical cyclones consolidating in the eastern Atlantic becoming long-track tropical cyclones. Instead, you had stuff waiting until it got into the Caribbean or even further west to get going. And that tended to mean you had a lot of land impacts. So uh, if we do have an active season, hopefully that means uh, this is kind of tamped down a bit so that instead of... Uh, causing tropical waves to get f going further west, you have them kind of go, uh, getting going right off half, uh, right off of Africa. Maybe they can kind of recurve out in the Atlantic, but we'll we really have to see because that is an entirely different ball game with stuff like steering currents and stuff that's way too early to be looking at in early April. Now, one kind of final thing here that I'm looking at. And this is the um, intertropical convergence zone. Basically, we can see where it has been relative to average uh, through the OLR anomaly. So that's basically the uh, outlook going long range or long wave radiation. And higher values, despite this uh, color scheme, higher values mean you get higher um or higher temperature basically from uh, satellites and that means you tend to have drier conditions uh, less convection or cloud cover and so the higher um, IR temperatures here it tends to also mean uh, yeah, generally general dryness here and then wetness and more convection uh, when you have those negative values so it is a bit misleading at first but if you look at this, you can see this area of above average convection. And right to the south, you see this area of below average convection. So this dipole right here tends to mean you have a north shifted um, intertropical convergence zone. So instead of being near the equators, it usually is it has been above the equator. And that tends to mean you have enhanced uh, southeasterly trade winds in the South Atlantic, and that'll cool down this area. And in turn, that slow, slows down the northeasterly trade winds in the North Atlantic. So this tends to be, an, uh, the, or this is a sign usually of a negative Atlantic meridional mode in the atmosphere, and that will tend to warm up the um, tropics as well, if it holds. So there's definitely a possibility I will see if that happens, but um, it definitely does look like there are uh, more factors on the more active side rather than the less active. But since it is April 1st, I'm being a bit conservative in my predictions because we do have some uncertainty at this point, but not enough that I would just kind of go with a more uh, at least near normal season. And so I'm forecasting 14 to 18 named storms, 6 to 10 uh, hurricanes, 2 to 4 major hurricanes with 100 to 140 accumulated cyclone energy points. And that is uh, definitely a uh, leaning above average season, but nothing too crazy yet because uh, I want to give some more time to see if we're really getting into conditions that will support a more active hurricane season. But um, the conditions do... Uh, do suggest that we're headed for our sixth consecutive uh, active season. Unfortunately, there is a lot of time for that to change, and hopefully it does. However, even if the season is inactive, you can still get very destructive hurricanes. For example, 1992, very inactive hurricane season, but the one big storm was Andrew, which hit um, the Bahamas and South Florida's very high-end tropical cyclone. And so that can that was still very destructive, even in a very inactive season. So no matter how inactive it is, it just takes one bad storm like that to make it a uh, bad season for uh, your area. And it it is a, uh, still only April, but 
Yeah, it is t- getting to the time where you might want to start preparing for the season ahead. Uh, and hopefully you will end up safe for this hurricane season. If you have any questions or comments about my video or my forecast, please let me know. And thanks for watching.